Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you a proof that shows that pi is equal to zero. As I go through this problem, see if you can figure out where the mistake is. And at the very end of this video, I will do my best to try to explain why this proof is a fake proof. So we'll start the proof by writing down zero. And then just making a really simple observation. Zero is equal to zero. At the same time, if you take zero and you add it to zero, you get zero. So zero plus zero is equal to zero. In fact, I can add another zero here and there's still no issue. Zero plus zero plus zero is still equal to zero. And I can just keep adding zeros forever and I'm always going to get zero. So zero is equal to zero plus zero plus zero plus dot 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 and it just goes on forever. The three dots mean that it just keeps going forever. No matter how many times you add zero to itself, you're always going to get zero. So where does the pi come from? In the next step, we can write this as zero equals, and then note um, that zero is the same thing as pi minus pi. So this is pi minus pi, right? So zero is pi minus pi, because pi minus pi is equal to zero. So if you subtract pi from itself, you're going to get zero. Then we have this plus sign here. And then same thing here, I'm going to take this zero and we're gonna write it as pi minus pi. So pi minus pi. And then plus, and then we'll take this zero here and we'll write this as pi minus pi. So pi minus pi, just like that and then plus, and then it just goes on forever. It's pi minus pi plus pi minus pi, which is really just zero. So we've really done nothing here, right? Because pi minus pi is the same thing as zero. So nothing has really occurred here. In the next step, we're also basically going to do nothing. We're simply going to rearrange the terms uh, in just a more convenient way. So I'm gonna go ahead and write this one down here. So this one is pi. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine these two here. So this one here, this negative pi and this pi, I'm gonna combine these two. So these two are gonna be combined into one term like this. So plus, so negative pi plus pi, just like that. Just combining those two into one term. So these two right here. So negative pi plus pi and then plus, then we'll take these two here, negative pi plus pi. So negative pi plus pi. And then plus, and then we'll take this negative pi with the pi that you don't see over here. Remember, because it repeats forever. So there's an invisible pi here. We can take that one as well. So it'll be negative pi plus and then pi. And then again, this is an infinite sum. So it goes on forever, right? It's just, we're constantly adding negative pi plus pi, negative pi plus pi, negative pi plus pi. It just goes on forever and ever and ever. So this is zero equals pi. And then negative pi plus pi, well, that's just zero. So this is plus zero. Then we have this plus sign here. And negative pi plus pi, again, is simply zero. Then we have this plus sign here. And then negative pi plus pi again is just zero. And then plus, and again, it just goes on forever, negative pi plus pi, which is also zero. So they're all zeros. So we have zero equals. So this is zero plus zero plus zero. So all of this is just zero. So you have pi plus zero. So it's just pi. So we take this infinite sum of zeros, it's just gonna give us one zero. But that's just, zero equals pi, right? Because pi plus zero is pi. So zero equals pi. So basically we've shown that pi is equal to the number zero. So how can this possibly be, right? This is not supposed to happen. Pi is obviously not equal to zero. Pi is one of the most important numbers in all of mathematics. I mean, it's super key. And why did this happen? So 
the key is that whenever you have uh, a series like this, this is called uh, an alternating series, um, you're not necessarily allowed to rearrange the terms. In general, if you have a series that's called uh, a series that's absolutely convergent, you can rearrange the terms. So you're not necessarily allowed to rearrange these. Um, it's it's just not something you can do in mathematics. And the reason is you get stuff like this happening. Let me just try to explain it in a different way. So if you look at if you look at this infinite sum here, n equals zero to infinity. Okay. And uh, this infinite sum uh, will be pi times negative 1 to the n. Okay, so what is this infinite sum? This infinite sum is basically uh, what I've written here. This basically ends up being pi, right? Because you plug in uh, a 0 and you get negative 1 to the 0, which is 1. When you plug in 1, you get negative 1 to the 1, which is negative 1. So it's negative pi. Then uh, plug in 2, and it's pi. So it's the same thing we have in the problem, basically. And so it just does this uh, forever. Right, just goes on forever. But in mathematics, uh, we don't really assign a value to this series we say this series uh, diverges. In other words, it doesn't make sense. So it diverges. And the reason it diverges, if you know some calculus, is by something called the nth term test. So the nth term test says, if you have an infinite series, say from zero to infinity of a sub n, and you take the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, and this limit uh, does not exist. So if this, if this occurs, then we say that the series diverges. So in this example here, um, this, this series diverges because if you take the limit as n approaches infinity of pi times negative 1 to the n, well, as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, um, this just keeps oscillating, right? It's either pi or negative pi, pi or negative pi, pi or negative pi. So what is the limit of this sequence? Well, we don't know, right? Because it just it's just bouncing back and forth forever. If you do a graph, let me just show you a graph. Let's say this is pi and say this is negative pi. If you were to graph this sequence, okay, it would look something like this. It'd be pi, negative pi, pi, negative pi, pi, negative pi, et cetera. So I'm gonna make the dots bigger so you can see them. So the values of the sequence would just oscillate uh, between between pi and negative pi uh, forever, right, forever. So as n approaches infinity, the terms aren't really approaching anything. So this sequence diverges. And so because the sequence diverges, this infinite sum also diverges. So in general, you're just not allowed um, to do that. Um, another way to understand it, let me go ahead and write down uh, this infinite sum again for us, n equals zero uh, to infinity pi negative 1 to the n. So by definition, um, from the definition of convergence, this is actually equal to, um, well, let me just, yeah, let me just show you like this. Limit as, um, let me use, um, I'll use k, approaches infinity of s sub k. So this is the limit. s sub k is called the partial sum. And so this would be the same thing as this. It would be pi negative one to the one plus pi negative one squared plus pi negative one to the k. And so you run into the same problem. If you're trying to compute this infinite sum, you end up computing this limit. And again, you have this negative one to the k here, which just oscillates forever. And so it's not really approaching anything. So this diverges. So there's no way to show that this makes sense because it doesn't. And so in our proof up here, basically that's uh, what we were assuming. Um, we, we assumed that we could rearrange the terms and you can't do that, right? You can't do that. 
Um, so yeah, the one time you can always rearrange the terms is if you have what's called absolute convergence, but kind of a fun trick and you can show this to people and they're probably, they might not know uh, where the flaw is, but again, the mistake is right here. Here's the mistake. You're not allowed to rearrange the terms of this infinite series unless it's absolutely convergent, which this is not. I hope that made some sense. I think the explanation was more confusing than <laughs> me showing you that pi equals zero. But the main point is you're not allowed to rearrange terms uh, unless you have absolute convergence, in which case you can. Absolute convergence basically means um, if you take the absolute value, uh, so if you have a series and you look at this series here, the absolute value of a sub n, if this series converges, then we say the original series converges absolutely. So uh, not the case here, right? If you take the absolute value here, uh, you're just going to get pi plus pi plus pi plus pi plus pi forever, which is going to be, you know, infinity. So it's not going to converge absolutely. So, um, so this series does not converge absolutely, so you cannot rearrange the terms. Yeah, that was a lot of calculus there for such a simple proof. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, please leave any comments in the comment section below. Good luck.